Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and I'm going to be starting my tutorial series that I talked about last Wednesday on the Blender modifiers. Now, the first, so in the scene, I just have, it's just a brand new project. I just hit command N and reload startup file. That's all, that's, I, there's nothing different in the scene. So the way you get to the modifiers is you scroll over in this tab, or you can also bring this tab out, and it will look like a wrench. So I'm going to click on this wrench, and it's going to give me this add modifier. I'm going to go to the first on the list, which is the array. Now, there's a few things that you have, there's a few variables for this, but I'm going to explain that next. What the array does is it allows you to make a bunch of objects in the scene that are based off of one object and that are offset by one object. Now, if you've seen my Storm Strike updates, which I highly suggest you check out, and I'll probably put a card up here. Um, I actually have used those in the place where I made the cryo tubes. That's just an array where I added a count and I put it along the right offset. And I'll get to that next. So the array allows you to offset objects um, by relative offset, which is by each. So if I did two of these, each of the, if I did three, each of these is 2.1 units apart. Whereas, if I turn this off and I turn on constant offset and I take this to 2.1, you'll see that each of these is 2.1, I guess, away from the original object. So it splits them. It splits it based on how far away they are. It's a confusing process. But most of the time, you won't want to use constant offset because you have to use a really big number. That's for small stuff. I personally like relative because that's really handy and you can move stuff very quickly. So, yeah, hold on one second as I fix my key caster and I move this to the middle. Okay. So, that's what the array does. But now let's look at the different fit types because these are for a bit confusing. There's a few types. There is fixed count, fit length, and fit curve. Now, fixed count is just how many objects you want in your scene. So, since I don't have any offset, I'm going to change. I'm going to take this to eight. I'm going to turn on relative off offset. Now, you'll see that puts. Um, if I zoom out by holding down Control and zooming out and um, scrolling up with my scroll pad, you'll see that there's eight of them in the scene. So, and I can also decrease this by just clicking this, and I can increase it. Let's say we wanted to take this like 100, something crazy like that. Then we could do that, and you'll see there are 100 cubes in there. So, it's a very easy way to offset something a bunch of times. I'm going to leave this at 3. Um, so, that's that. The fit length is fair. It's actually pretty cool, because let's say we want... So now this is length and blender units. So it depends on what your project settings are, but I don't remember exactly where that is. But in your project settings, you can set, here it is. So since I don't have any units, it's just doing it by the blender units. But you can set this to metric or imperial, and imperial is feet and metric is meters. And it's a pretty cool thing. You can do degrees and radians, and it's a nice little thing. I'm going to keep this on imperial, leave the scale to one. So now, if I go back to this modifiers, when it says length, we're going to want this to fit. We can, we want this to fit, let's say, for each, each 27 feet, there's one. So because there's 28, that means that there's another one. And so that fits the length. That's really good for 3D printing if you want to do something like this, because then you can scale your objects. Because if I scale this, whoops, that's the rotate key. Um, if I hit the scale button... I scale this down to right here, and it'll still do the same, but that's because of our offset. I'm going to change this back to 1, and you'll see that we have a bunch of them in our scene, and they're just one after the other. I'm going to take this up to 1.5. And so you'll see, as I increase this number, less and less of them get there. But the more I put, the less distance between them, the more I can fit. So that's a nice little thing. It also works with constant offset. This is feet between them. So that's nice. So that actually is really cool. And yeah, the constant offset is done by the um, units. The relative is just done by that. 
So then there's the object offset. I'm going to change this. Oh, and I forgot there's fit curve. Now, personally, I would not want to do this because fit curve is not very good. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to go to curve bezier. And I'm going to scroll in. I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe. And you'll see it puts a curve. Now I'm going to scale this up by hitting S and dragging it out to the end of this. And I'm going to click on these cubes and I'm going to turn on object offset and I'm going to select our bez actually no wrong one I'm going to click on the curve and select this now you'll see it's a bit weird and I personally do not use this method I do not like this the, if you're going to want it to go along a curve this is how I do it um, I add a curve modifier which we will get to later uh, a curve modifier and that lets it fit around the curve so that's not that useful for me but Fixed count is usually what I use, so I'm going to use 5, and I'm going to turn on a relative offset for 1. Uh, 1.5. And then object offset does by object. And this is actually a pretty cool thing I discovered recently, is it finds the object's position. So let's say we wanted to put it on the camera. It finds that object's position and offsets every object by that object. So... If I zoom out, you can see that's actually offsetting each time by the camera's rotation and position in space. And that's a little cool thing. You can also do this with the lamp. So I'm going to change this to lamp. And you'll see that it puts it right on the lamp, but then each object after that is offset the same distance from the lamp to the object and the same rotation. So that's a nice little thing. Um, I don't know why you'd use that, but it's just a cool little thing, maybe if you're doing an explosion or something like that. Now there's one other cool thing that I don't want to talk about and that's the start cap in cap and for that we're going to need two new objects for this first I'm going to hit click on this and I'm going to hit X and delete that object that curve object and I'm going to add um, a sphere by hitting shift a mesh you uh, and I guess sphere works and I'm going to change yep that works so now if I click on this and I change the start cap to the ICO sphere the end cap to the icosphere you'll see that we have caps now but because these guys are so small but and it just automatically put it right there now if we scale this up I believe nope never mind that does not work so it's just the scale of the cube determines how big those are but you can also if I took this up to six all these would move out and that's a nice little thing to use so that was the array modifier. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to have a bunch of fun doing the series. It's really fun. Um, next modifier on the list is the bevel modifier. And we'll be getting into how to use that correctly. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.